Hey, it's me, LH Music. Guess what? This is it, folks. My final political life video blog episode that you don't want to miss about this one. You just have to trust me about that. Anyways, two, two, two solutions that I want to discuss this. One is going to be James Comey. And the other one is, yeah, you guessed it, campus free speech. And why? Because Betsy DeVos says so in the first place, so who knows. Anyways, um, let's get started with, you guessed it, call me. <laughs> you know, last Thursday, he just always tells the truth and tells lies and I have no objections whatsoever. And I cannot believe my eyes and ears. But, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line about this one. Because after all this time about, you guessed it, testifying before the Senate Intelligence Committee hearing last Thursday because James Comey says that shortly being after being fired with by President Trump he guessed it because he asked a close friend at Columbia University Columbia University Law School to take uh, to, 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 to leak a um, a memo detailing a conversation that he had with the commander in chief. I want you to listen to Susan Collins and see what you think about this because after all this time, because everything else can be civilized. Listen to this. Finally, did you show copies of your memos to anyone outside of the Department of Justice? Yes. And to whom did you show copies? I asked, um, the president tweeted on Friday after I got fired that I better hope there's not tapes. I woke up in the middle of the night on Monday night because it didn't dawn on me originally that there might be corroboration for our really? conversation. There might be a tape. And my judgment was I needed to get that out into the public square. And so I asked Wait, a friend uh, of mine public, to what? share the content public of the memo wish. with a reporter. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons, but I asked him to because I thought that might prompt the appointment of a special counsel. And so I asked a close friend of mine to do it. And was that Mr. Wittes? No, no. Who, who was that? A good friend of mine who's a professor at Columbia Law School. You mean, you mean Columbia University professor and former pro federal prosecutor Dan Richmond, huh? And he just documented, documented with this Oval Office meeting during Trump allegedly to ask Comey to let it let go of the investigation into a former national security advisor Michael Flynn you just said that haven't you and what about the New York Times just reported that the leak memo on yeah you guessed it last month May 16th and that and and after two days later the for, former FBI director Robert Mueller was being appointed as a special counsel for the ongoing Russian investigation Investigation. So, who knows? What about what about Senator Roy Blunt tells you that you you're such a private citizen you wouldn't know that no it haven't you haven't you listen to this exchange about this one listen to this Something earlier I don't want to fail to follow up on you said after you were dismissed you gave information to a friend so that friend could get that information into the public media correct what kind of information was that was not what kind of information did you give to a friend that the pre the the, uh, the flynn conversation that the president had asked me to let the, the flynn I mean, i'm forgetting my exact own words but the, the conversation in the oval office so you didn't consider your memo or your sense of that conversation to be a government document. You consider it to be somehow your own personal document that you could share with the media as you wanted to? Correct. Through a I, friend? I understood this to be my recollection recorded of my conversation with the president. As a private citizen, I felt free to share that. I thought it very important to get it out. So were all of your memos that you recorded on classified or other documents, uh, memos that might be yours as a private citizen? I'm sorry, I'm not following the question. Well, I think you said you'd use classified, classified uh, 
Oh, you're not the classified documents. Unclassified. I don't have any of them anymore, but I gave them to the special counsel. But yeah, my view was that the content of those unclassified, the memorialization of those conversations was my recollection recorded. So why didn't you give those to somebody yourself rather than give them through a third party? Because I was worried the media was camping at the end of my driveway at that point, and I was actually going out of town with my wife to hide, and I worried it would be like feeding seagulls at the beach. Feeding if, if seagulls, it was, oh If it was God. I who gave it to the media, so I asked my friend, make sure this gets out. It does seem to me that what... Yeah, this is, this is no, you know what, James, it doesn't make sense at all. You admit it, haven't you? But what about Trump's lawyer said to you about, you guessed it, that's right, what about Trump's lawyer said this whole remarks of your stupid idea testimonies? Because <laughs> I'll tell you one thing is, you made a decision about this one for yourself. I hate to bring this to you, but I hate to bring this to you, but uh, listen to Mark Kasowicz says to you over the weekend, last Friday, listen to this. That is, that the president was not under investigation mm -hmm. as part of any probe into Russian interference. The president, he, Mr. Comey also admitted that there is no evidence that a single vote changed as a result of any Russian interference. See, what did I tell you? You just admitted it. All the time, you just did. And it's, you did, you just did. Because everything else can be civilized about, you guessed it. Yeah, you guessed it, because everybody knows that filed, filed to, because the, Donald Trump's lawyer has filed a complaint on you. Because you leaked all over the memos of, uh, uh, because this is, I, I, I can't even understand you. What about Corey, Corey Lew, Lewandowski says to says to you oh, only on Good Morning America last month, uh, Good Morning America last Friday, Friday morning. George Stephanopoulos uh, asking a, ask a stupid idiotic question and he interrupts it. Listen to this. This morning, you know, we saw the president's tweet this morning. He said, uh, basically, James Comey was lying yesterday. Also said he had vindication. You said James Comey is a liar all the time. Now, the president could prove who's telling the truth by releasing tapes of those conversations. Will he release them? Look, I don't know if they're tapes, George. You've worked in the White House. You know uh, how the system works. I don't know if there's well, a no, every president structure. Different. But you know but, President but, Trump. But I don't know if there's a tape inside. What? The president has said maybe could, there is, maybe there isn't. I don't know talk. if there is or isn't. I don't work in the building. So what I do know is this. Not yesterday, when James Comey was testifying, but when he was the director of the FBI, he made repeated misstatements that he had to, get, he had to go back and clarify afterwards, and he made the, the same the thing. The it is just repeated. Ask opinions. Did you hear it just said, George Stephanopoulos? Lewandowski is right. Trump's lawyer is right. You, Comey, just lied to your face right there so here's why so so so, so here's why Trump needs to know about this subject about this one uh, this one because over the White House is inside the Rose Garden because the liberal media by special people try to uh, yeah do something very stupid to Trump with that. Just, just, just listen to this. I didn't say that. So he lied about that. Well, I didn't say that. I mean, I will tell you, I didn't say that. And and did he ask you to pledge? And there'd be nothing wrong if I did say it, according to everybody that I've read today. But I did not say that. And see, I told you, I told you, you MSNBC people, buffoons, you, you wish for thinking. You, you just, just. Tr trash Trump at a time like this. But there's more. And did he ask for a pledge of loyalty from you? That's another thing he said. No, he did not. So he said those things under oath. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of, of 100%. And I didn't say under oath. 
I hardly know the man. I'm not going to say I want you to pledge allegiance. Who would do that? Who would ask a man to pledge allegiance under oath? I mean, think of it. I hardly know the man. It doesn't make sense. No, I didn't say that, and I didn't say the other. So if Robert Mueller wanted to speak with you about that, you I would be, be glad to, to, to tell him exactly what I just told you, Joe. And you seem to be hinting that there are right, recordings enough. of those conversations. I'm not right, that's, right, that's enough. That's enough. You, no, 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 no. Mr. Reporter, you heard Trump said he didn't say anything. He didn't say not a, not, a, not one word. Because everything else can be slice. Just stop it. But, but that is not all. Listen to Rush. Uh, Rush Limbaugh says about yeah about his recaps. Listen to this. I am coming around to believe that James Comey has been part of an ongoing effort to entrap President Trump for the express purposes of having him legally charged with whatever offenses they could drum up. I believe that Comey is just one of the many agents in the Washington establishment who have devoted themselves to trickonomy, mm -hmm. deceit, and all-out warfare in an effort to entrap or ensnare Trump or in other ways to just flat out destroy Trump. And the fact that it isn't working, because one thing is for sure, after yesterday, nothing changes. The people that hate Trump are still there and the people that love Trump are still there. And the people that love Trump are becoming more and more hated. See, Rush is right. You, call me are wrong. You try to complete a vindication. Vindication, because, and the detract, what about the detractors? Well, guess what? In the other hand, your characterization of being private is just evidence. Even Chris Matthews running down his, yeah, leg that he admitted. <laughs> How dumb. The bottom line is this. You might think so smart about former FBI director James Comey would receive an eye-popping sum of money for a telling all book of his ugh. And ugh, God. Because everybody knows been narratives inside the House of Cards, yeah, Netflix original series. Because you know why? Because because can be civilized about this one. It could be a little house of cars going to Daily Mail because because Comey needs a, you, you wish for that. Uh, well, guess what? Now you know it can't happen again. So Comey, ugh, you lose. Big time. Okay. One more thing. Okay. Finally. I would just make it short. You just have to trust me about that. Here's why. That uh, Betsy DeVos tried to pick a First Amendment Crusader to be the deputy, deputy assistant for se assistant secretary for higher educational programs. Because after I know all the James, James Comey's of the world hearing uh, all this week is just give me a give me a headache. But this is very important. Campus free speech is a is a thing to um, can be civilized about this one because the Department of Education Educational administers programs that broadens access access to higher education. Strengthens the capacity, uh, uh, capacity uh, uh, of colleges and, and universities that coordinates a number of higher education to relate activities with states. Take for instance, Adam Kissel, the boss, tried to pick 
and think he, he and he is a five-year veteran of the Foundation of Individual Rights in Education known as FIRE. Could be the organization organization that focus on free speech and due process on college campuses across America. America and <laughs> it's gonna be huge. Trust me about that. Take for instance, according to College Fix, Cassell also works on issues pertaining to Bucknell's uni Buc Bucknell University's punishment of a affirmation action back sales, the disruption of an Israeli ambassador's speech at UC Irvine in California. And what about Brooklyn College professor try to be defensive to face an investigation on his beliefs by the College Integrity Committee for opening criticizing this? of an indoctrination and ideological discrimination by college staffs? Well, now I know it's gonna be huge. What about Democrat, Washington Democratic Senator Patty Murphy? Uh, she's a ranking member of Senate, oh Lord have mercy. And she released a huge statement on, uh, uh, from the Senate committee website, and that's why she lambasted Kissel for his support of a higher burden of a proof of survivor of a sexual. But <sighs> Patty, now you, Patty Mur Murray, you know, now you know that's not that is not true. Listen to this Murray says a stupid, huge statement about this one. I am deeply troubled. This hired is another concern that a uh, concerning sign that President Trump makes to uh, makes huge plans to make it more difficult for survivors of campus sexual violence to get justice. Yes, and why? Because campus sexual violence is an urgent public health threat nationwide and rolling back steps that have empowered survivors. Survivors, uh, you know, you know the rest. The rest. Prove me wrong, Senator Patty Murphy. You stupid democratic bimbo. You, you're wrong. Because this is this is not the first time that Betsy DeVos has picked a controversial figure to fill in the blanks of an important role within the education department. Well, what about, well, guess what? In April. DeVos chose Candace Jackson. She's a libertarian, yeah, I know. And she, I think she's a, she's a member of Ludwig von Missile Institute, a think tank of free market libertarian scholars. And she is to be, yes, the Deputy Assistant Secretary in the Office for Civil Rights. And what about, what about Candace knows? She is known as her opposition to feminism and race-based college programs. Well, that's a start. So who knows? Everybody wants to know. Here's the bottom line. The moral of my political, political life video blog, could be the last one, is this, two things. One. When you have hate speech at a time like this, or about this, or all this stuff, uh, uh, no, no. Let's not have a hate speech ever again. Free speech is free. Free speech on campus and universities are, yeah, you guessed it. You, uh, you get to speak whatever your mind, speak your mind and all that stuff. That's pure simple. Well, as for James, call me for the last time or what it is because everybody knows that because the world is trying to focus on the James Comey hearings uh, yeah. because Comey is still a stupid idiotic leaker because you know why because Rush is right Corey Lewandowski is right and so is Trump's lawyers right that's something to flip you with flip your lead, haven't you so, whatever you do, 
don't listen to James call me ever again. What about the liberal media about uh, pfft, That's fake news. What else can I say? So, that's the end of it for now. And I, as I close this blog on my political life video blog, then you know the rest of the darn story. Anyways, that's my final political life video blog story. And I'm sticking to it. See you in September.